Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we are just solving one more two-dimensional static equilibrium problem. So here we have a beam. We're applying this, uh, this force here, 500 newtons, 30 degrees off the horizontal. And then we have two supports. So at A, we have a hinge support. And at B, we have a roller support. Roller is basically just a hinge with rollers on it. So it's able, it, it's not able to provide that sort of lateral um, side to side resistance. Okay. So let's go ahead and we'll draw a free body diagram first of all. Let's uh, let's first label it, just so everyone knows if someone's marking you on a test or something, you clearly write, this is the free body diagram, and for all intents and purposes, that way is the positive x direction, and that way is the positive y direction. That way there's no questioning about what you're drawing. So then what we do is we draw all of the external forces acting on this object. So first of all, we have the 500 Newton applied force. And then these reaction forces also count as applied forces to the black beam. So looking at A, if we were to just think only about this connection to A, if we pulled the beam to the right, it is fixed to the ground and it would be able to resist that. So uh, we know that there's some component or the reaction force at A will have some component in the x direction. So we'll just draw that on individually as the x component. If we were to pull up on the beam right here, yeah, again, it's it's completely fastened to the floor. It would be able to resist that. Or same thing if we tried to push into it, it's not going to go through the floor. So we know that there is some uh, Y component to this reaction force at A. Now, if we were to try and rotate this object about A, this is a hinged connection, so it's not going to resist that. So we're not going to draw on, uh, we don't say that this has any moment that it's able to apply. Okay, looking at B, we mentioned this is basically just like a hinge, but it has rollers. So if we were to try and just look at B here, and if we were to push the beam this way, if it was only connected at B, it would slide, right? It would slide on these wheels. So it's not able to resist any uh, forces in the X direction. So it doesn't actually provide a reaction force with an X component. If we were to push it straight down into the ground, you can see obviously that um, it wouldn't be able to go through the ground. So we know that there is at least potentially some Y component of this force. So we'll call that BY. It's important to note here, if this, if we're thinking about this in real life, if this is just rollers sitting on the ground, if we were to pull up, yeah, this thing would come off the ground. So by that, we know that actually the ground can only push up on the beam to resist us pushing down. But what we do is on the free body diagram, we can just draw these in any direction, um, but it's recommended to draw them in the positive directions, so like the positive x direction and the positive y direction. Uh, that way, when we're solving for them, if we get a negative value, we'll know that we just drew these in the wrong direction. We assumed the wrong direction and then all our formulas will work out really nicely. Okay, so let's start out here. Uh, we know this is all in static equilibrium, so we wanna find what are the reaction forces. So first of all, we'll do sum of forces in the x direction. Well, we know that's equal to zero. So all we do is we sum up the forces and set it equal to zero. So the sum of forces in the x direction is this ax here. So we have ax plus, the only other thing with an x component here would be this guy. So it is plus 500 cos of 30, and that's all equal to zero. So there you get zero is the right-hand side of the equation, and the sum of forces is the left-hand side of the equation. Well, if we just rearrange for ax, basically all we do is we just compute this in our calculator and bring it over to the other side. So we're actually going to figure out that ax is going to be equal to negative 433 newtons, and that's just this in your calculator, and then it's brought over to the other side, so it's negative. Okay, this is the same thing as saying 433 newtons that way. And the reason we say it's that way, it's acting to the left, is well, you can think about this. If we're pulling, if we're applying this blue force trying to pull the beam this way, if it's in static equilibrium, it's not going to go that way. And so the reaction force over here at A is going to have to pull it in an equal and opposite x direction to ensure that there's no sort of translation in the x direction. Uh, so that's why this is exactly the same, actually, because the x component of this is just 433 newtons. Okay, so there we go. That's uh, ax, but we still have ay and by. So if we go here and do sum of forces in the y direction, uh, well, we know that's equal to zero. So if we go and write that, we get um, ay plus by, right? So it's going in the positive direction, positive direction. And then we'll subtract the y component of this, because if you think about it, the, the x component was like that, and the y component was down like that. So it's in the negative y direction. So we have uh, minus 500 
sine 30. Right, and that just gives us with simple trigonometry the y component of this force. Okay, we set that all equal to zero. We can simplify this a little bit because we know that negative uh, 500 sine 30, if you punch that in your calculator, is actually 250. So we get ay plus by minus 250 equals zero. So we can simplify that just to ay plus by equals 250 newtons. Okay, now looking at this, we have one equation, two unknowns. So we actually can't solve this by itself. It's impossible. Um, the, the next thing we have to do then, in order to figure out uh, what one of these is and substitute it in, is we have to do the sum of moments about some point. So that's our third equation for 2D static equilibrium problems. So we'll say the sum of moments. We'll pick some point. It can be any point. In this case, it'll be easy for us just to pick A. Uh, the sum of moments about A. Uh, we'll pick some direction for our positive sense, and we'll say that that's all equal to zero, okay, because this thing is in static equilibrium. Now, what we need to do is we'll just figure out what the sum of moments is. So about A, looking at this, we're going to have this force here, By, exerting a moment about A, because if we allowed A, to, if we allowed this object to rotate about A, By would make it sort of spin around A like that, and we're definitely creating a moment there. So that moment is just the perpendicular distance to the line of action of the force, and the line of action of the force goes like that, straight through. Um, so we have, <clears throat> I will have 2 meters times the magnitude of the force, so we'll have times by. And then for the other moment here, and this is a positive moment, right, because it's tending to want to create it to, to rotate in this counterclockwise direction, and that's what we've defined here as a positive sense. Um, looking at the y component of the, the applied blue force, it's actually going in the negative y direction. And if we were to allow that to spin the object around, or rotate the object around point A, you see it would create the object to have this uh, clockwise rotation, which is the opposite direction of what we've defined as positive. So this is going to create a negative moment. Okay, so then we'll just have times four meters, that's the perpendicular distance to the line of action of the force, which is like that. And then the magnitude of the force, well, the magnitude of the force, we actually already calculated it over here. It was 250 newtons. So let's drop that in there, 250 newtons. That was the magnitude of the force is 500 sine 30. Okay, uh, and that is all equal to zero. So we can simplify this a little bit. We have by, it's the only unknown in this equation. So we'll bring this over four times uh, 250 and we'll change the sign so that's um, 1,000 newton meters and then we'll divide it all by two over two, uh, two meters. Okay, so then we get by is equal to, well, 1,000 divided by 2, that's 500 newtons. And notice that it's positive. So that means that we've drawn this, we've assumed the drawing here is in the correct direction. What we've assumed here is the correct di uh, direction, which makes total sense because this is pulling down. And if you, you can imagine this in real life. If you pulled down on uh, something that was hinged here, this is going to be pushing up on it, resisting you from pulling it down through the floor. And that upward force that's acting on it is basically this, By. Okay, so now what we need to do is we know By, so we can substitute it in here. So we get Ay is equal to uh, 250 newtons minus By, which was 500 newtons. And so then we'll figure out that Ay is just negative 250 newtons. And that is the same thing as saying uh, 250 newtons in the downward direction. Whereas again, same thing, this is saying 500 newtons in the upward direction, as we just talked about. So again, last thing to check is, you can imagine this, if this is like a diving board or something, you can something you're familiar with, if we're pushing down some amount here on the end, it's going to push up against us here, but then we're going to have to balance out whatever the difference is, otherwise this object is going to totally want to translate in the y direction. And it turns out that if we have, um, where were we? If we had 250 newtons pushing down here, 500 newtons pushing up here, then we're going to have to have 250 newtons pressing down here to make sure that this object stays still and is in static equilibrium.